Hello and welcome to Steve's Backyard Bonsai. As you can tell from the tops of these trees, they're looking okay. They're just coming to life. I brought them into the greenhouse today. They've been out all winter. These trees are my larches and they're in a landscape. And while the trees are looking good, the landscape's not. Let's take a look at it. And I put this landscape together last year early in the season and I poured some concrete for a roadway going this way. I did this one right after Central Park. So there's a similar type of construction here with waterways underneath it so that um, uh, so that water wasn't ponding on one side of the pot just in case I had some plantings here. And I poured a roadway. I made this out of uh, the blacktop repair material that you can get, the liquid, and mixed it with some white sand, and it didn't do well at all. <laughs> so let me get this moss out of here. I'm going to take these pieces of roadway out of here. I'm just going to rest them on the side. And I'm going to do a full restoration of this landscape and hopefully do some things that are a little bit more permanent seeming than this. I still like the concept of a road. I had some miniature vintage cars going up the road, like from the 50s and 40s. I had a lawn leading down to the road, which was a little too steep. I'm going to work on the inclines here. And if all the stars align, I'm also going to put guardrails here, which I have, but I've got to paint them. And I think they're going to look pretty cool once I do. Will I get finished? I'll try. And the, the most important thing I need to do on this landscape is to cut the trees down to size. I've always felt that for what I'm trying to do here, these trees are just too tall. And I want to keep this landscape in scale throughout its life. As hard as that might be, I think I've got the maintenance chops to keep up with it. Right now I'm just taking the muck, the muck layer off the top of this. I'm going to have to lower that down and I'll use a different, I'll use some fresh muck. I want to check the, the drainage on this side as well. It should be fine. But if I take this down and fill it, I want to see how long it takes to, to drain. And it looks like I have fines in there. Might be a mistake. Or maybe that's just the top. So funny, I didn't do this that long ago, but how quickly you forget what you did. I mean, I guess I could have watched the video, huh? It's it's there on uh, on YouTube. I don't have my videos indexed. I've apologized for this in the past. All of you who say I have that playlist, well, I don't have that. Okay, and also because this was outside, I'm expecting there to be some critters in here. So we'll see what I turn up. I'm just kind of cleaning this up. I probably won't finish it today. Uh, this may take me a few days to, uh, to accomplish, but I'll try to do it on one video. Okay, some of you might be saying, ooh, cut the trees back, why? Well, if you were a little car about this big, going down this road, those are some pretty tall trees, or they will be, I think, I should be looking to make an apex about this high on this tree, maybe a little higher toward the middle, and the middle had not gotten much light. So that made me start thinking about all these big trees that I lined the outside with to, to, to get it to look like the older trees were in the back. I had also said that I thought this would be the kind of landscape that you'd want to walk around, in which case that's a drone's eye view 
and maybe these outside trees need to be t shorter and the inside trees need to get the light. I don't know, just something I'm playing around with in my head. Whatever it is I come up with, I will come up with it before I finish this project. These trees are staked with just the heaviest gauge wire I had. <laughs> Looks like four or four and a half millimeter wire. I've got some surface roots here, which I could really try and take care of now. And they might help me with this incline. I also put a drain in here, a little copper drain that's completely covered. I've got to figure out a way to keep that maintainable. And the drain goes, you know, it's just a little quarter inch copper pipe that I flared at the top. And it sticks out at the bottom a little bit. All right, I'll go into fast mode for this. to finish this over a few days. Um, I've cleaned off the top of the landscape. I'm realizing this tree is quite loose. So I'm, I've got some stones I want to put on this. And if I put the stones on it, I'm not going to be able to move it. So I'm going to go put it out on the bench, put some stones on it. And then I'm going to work on pruning up these trees. I'm also going to probably with, leave the stones on it all year and take off these um, these stakes that I have. All right. Also, the road is quite knackered. Uh, big pothole here. Uh, I'm probably going to have to take a sander to it and just see what's going on with it. Uh, I'm not going to let it get too wet. Um, I've got to repair it. This just comes with the territory. All right. Thank you for keeping me company in my backyard. Can you see me? I don't know if you can. Well, thank you. Thank you for keeping me company in my backyard. Hello and welcome back. I know I signed this one off a couple of days ago, um, but there were some things that needed to be done and I just couldn't help myself and had to do it. Now you may have seen me pull the road surface away from here and I'm just kind of evaluating the whole situation. This is a little drain I put in here, but I, in addition, I drilled some holes in the side of this mica pot so that any water collecting on the roadway, and it will, you got a hill coming down here and you've got a hill over here everything's going to converge on the roadway and I need to employ some land use management and put some more drainage in there. I was getting a lot of water just piling up here because uh, this drain gets clogged very, uh, very easily and it will continue to do so. So maintenance on a forest is important to begin with Maintenance on this forest is going to go a little bit beyond that, and it's going to have to um, uh, be constant. Now, I had some divots in the road surface, little pieces that came away with the um, coating that I had put on here. So I am graduating now to Flex Seal, which I purchased to waterproof my greenhouse windows, which... I still have to figure out how to do, but this is the this is what I'm going to be using on the surface. So I want to make sure that I've got this side very well waterproofed, and hopefully 
this will also pool and um, create a situation where there's a seal between between the pot and the um, and the surface, the road surface. This may take a couple of coats, and I'm going to sprinkle some um, like a black and white aggregate onto the surface, which hopefully will um, will make it look more like asphalt. I'm also going to be coating the sides a little way down. And I've chosen this excellent brush to do this, at least on the edges. And I'm not sure if I can, I'm not sure if I can thin it to the point where I can clean and salvage this brush, but I certainly hope so. So I've repaired the road surface now I'm waterproofing the road surface and I'll do so a little ways down in the pot on both sides and putting this on very liberally. If I catch a uh, piece of bonsai soil aggregate, well, oh well. Now, since I started this video, I've exceeded. So thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much. I have one person to shout out to, to really thank for my count going over the edge. And that's Dave from Dave's Bonsai. Dave, thank you so much. It meant so much to me and I, can't let that go unnoticed. So once again, it's raining, not quite as hard as it was when I reviewed the uh, 3D printed pots. You could barely hear my voice, but it's raining pretty hard right now. I'm gonna switch brushes for the road surface itself. All right, I'm gonna use a real throwaway brush for the road surface. This stuff skins over pretty easily, but hopefully it will be you know, viable for this purpose. I'm trying to maintain a very wet road surface here. It's gonna be probably too shiny in the end, but we'll see how the aggregate that I put on this works. And what I did last time with that same aggregate is that I um, I sanded it. You know, I had it mixed into the to the um, to the material I had used, which failed miserably. The material I used is the same stuff I used to fill the cracks in my my blacktop driveway out front, which has already failed. So I won't give the name lest it. It seemed like I'm endorsing the product, because I'm not. All right. So there's my road surface. There are the holes in the side for drainage. All right, let me get that aggregate and sprinkle it on. It'll definitely stick. And I'm controlling it pretty easily with this salt shaker. Now this aggregate is, it's more white than black. It was a, um, 
It was the base of a cichlid tank that I had with uh, shell dwellers, and they used to love this stuff. So anyone who has fish tanks, Lamprologus speciosus was the shell dweller that I that I had. All right, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to let that dry. A little bit too much sheen for my taste. So this is going to take a while to dry. It looks pretty good. All right, I'm not worried about that road surface. It seems like it will do the trick. Here's what I have to do next. I'm going to backfill this a little bit and I'm going to apply muck to the road surface, I mean to the, um, uh, to the incline and around some of the trees. I am also going to prune some of these trees shorter and that's been my sticking point because I don't have real clear leaders on a lot of these trees and I'm just going to hope that the trees that seem to have a lot of energy right now take over and you know start growing new leaders and I'm talking about significantly cutting these back so if you look from here This wants to be my shortest tree. So do I prune those today? I think I'm going to. All right, so this video is gonna be longer than I thought it was, I apologize. I think I have to take the tie wraps off all the trees, pull up all the stakes, and then restake them afterwards. All right, let me go into fast mode and I'll be doing that. And hopefully I won't disturb the road at all. enjoyed that. I took off all of the ties. I don't see any place except for right here. I think well, I don't even see it anymore. Yeah, about right here was one of the places where the uh, uh, the twist tie started to make twist tie. I'm sorry, the uh, uh, the tie wrap started to make a, uh, a mark. The trees are pretty sturdy. There's only a couple of trees in here that I'm a little worried about. This one which is now being held by a rock. This one, which is not being held as tightly as I wanted by that rock. You see that one that has the, that I pointed out first, moving quite a bit. I'll get that rock in there. And this one here, and this one here. But other than that, they're holding pretty steady. I imagine though that when they have the, um, uh, the foliage on them, the wind is going to act on them quite a bit differently. And, I don't know, what do you think about the road? A little speckly? Yeah, I'll, it'll get another wash and then a sanding or maybe uh, steel wool to take down the sheen. And then it will look, I think, quite good. Then as I mentioned, I'm going to put muck and I have plenty of moss to put up on this hillside and I'm going to do a much better job of it and it'll be a different type of moss which I hope will hold the uh, surface better and this pick up this drain easier. Alright, so let's get to looking at each tree as to where a good place to prune them will be. And I might as well do the uh, branch pruning as well. I had done a chop right here and this grew up. I'm thinking I want this tree only this tall.
So here we go. Oh boy. This will become a cutting. I'm going to trim away the lower branches and get it in water right away. All right, so what's left of this tree? Maybe I'll get a leader out of this, and maybe I can get a leader out of this. The end of this branch is dead. I'm looking for upward growth. There's some sort of upward growth. And here's some sort of upward growth, but I don't like that branch. I'm gonna take it off. And I'm hoping for the best here. All right, I'm trying to make this tree nice and compact. This part of it, I think is dead. And once again, Nigel comes through with good suggestions when he says, don't prune until you know what's dead or alive. All right, so I'm gonna take this part of this branch off. This part of this branch off. And I've got one, two, three coming out at the end. This one, I don't like. I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna let the rest grow up. Okay, this branch. I'm gonna take it way down to here. Get to there. Take the end off of this. The end off of this. This part's dead. It's an ugly branch. It comes out at a really funny angle. Should I take the whole branch off? And you got nothing on that side. This is alive, but just barely. I'm going to leave this on and take this off. And that tree is as pruned up as I can get it. All right, this tree, if that tree is this size, this one probably wants to be that size. So, do I have another leader on this tree? I do. I have one back here, but it comes out funny. I've got one here. Do I like any of them? Oh, this is hard. A lot of these trees are going to be pretty bare when I'm done. I'm just going to clear off what I see as dead, and maybe that'll help me. Although I doubt it. Some old needles I'll take off. Not much dead there. This, yeah, this is dead. Oh man. I want to make this tree compact. So I can do that here. Could this be a leader? I'm bypassing this very, very live branch, but it comes out and it almost goes up at 90 degrees. Now, Nigel, will that straighten out? You're always saying these things smooth out over time. I don't know if I could take it down to there and kind of trust it. This maybe, but it comes out this way. This maybe, but that, I gotta be down to here. I gotta be down to here. All right, this one's a bit of a Hail Mary, as will a lot of these be. I'm coming down to here with this one. I'm gonna approach it from the inside.
but that one's not going in the water. It's too short. Now, getting it compact. This may take over as my leader. This I want to prune way back. This has a little life at the end. I'm just going to take the tip off of that end. This whole branch is dead. I'm going to leave it on as dead wood. And I'll gin it someday. <laughs> this is dead. I'll trim the end off of that. I'm going to trim the end off of this. And we've got two branches. I'm going to take the lower butt off of this one. And I'm going to trim this one to here. All right. Take this low branch off. There's nothing coming off there. And we'll see what this tree does. All right, one of the things I said I noticed about this forest is that it gets shaded out. This middle tree gets shaded out, and I had very little growth on it. It has some nice growth on it now. Let's go back to heights and looking for leaders. And if I can find a leader, terrific. I want to be drastic. This one I think I'm going to take to here. And this one will make a good cutting. Can I see the forest for the trees now? So this one should be a little bigger. We've got some dead on the top. No good potential leader. I do have a potential leader. But this is a little too tall. I really want to be down this high with this tree. And I guess I could have a leader there. All right, another Hail Mary coming up. Right, that's pretty drastic. So this one wants to be about this high, absolutely have no good place to cut that one. But I am going to cut it just below its initial chop, which was here. starting to be more of the scale I had in mind for this forest. And it was this forest that made me decide that I've got to be able to get my hands in between everywhere on a forest in the future. And that's what I've done on all of my newer projects. Or well, that's my intention anyway. Yeah. 
I'm going to go to here. got the road work done. I've got the trees pruned up. Do I like it? These two trees kind of converge on one another. I can correct that by cutting that tree there and have it start going back in that other direction. And I think I will doesn't really correct it, but it starts to. All right, so let's see how this forest fills out. I'll be back at another time to do the muck work and the moss. But for right now, I'm going to let this roadway dry, see how it looks. Now this time for real, thank you for keeping me company in my backyard. Actually, as I'm looking at this, I've got to cut this tree back. I've got to. And this tree. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. Give you all the final spin. To work on my large forest tree-lined roadway with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten trees. I just do want another tree in here. Maybe I stick a little one there. That would give me this line. But that would be a hard, a hard one to get to. Now for real, thanks for keeping me company in my backyard.